the children of the kingdom shows how they must act. Uh, it also answers the question of who is the neighbor? Who is your neighbor? And of course the answer was the one who shows mercy. It reveals number three, which is what we pull our title from, the sin of doing nothing. And that's kind of where I want to zero in at today, just for today. In the story, we have a victimized traveler on his way to Jericho, falls among murderers, bandits, robbers who beat him, strip him, and take everything that he has, leaving him helpless. Mm. I brought that up. Here's where I get a little bit political because I'm going to read it again. It's a story of a man who falls among murderous bandits, robbers who beat him, strip him, take everything he has and leave him helpless. That sounds like a lot of familiar past. Mm -hmm. What we as a people been through. Mm -hmm. Strip, beaten, everything stolen, taken, including your pride and everything else, and left helplessly. Mm -hmm. See how that story can relate? Mm -hmm. That's what I felt when I read that. This is a, this is a story, has a familiarity here that connects even with me. Mm -hmm. But here's the point that I want to say this after the fact. After the fact. Say it again, after the fact. After the fact. One more time, after the fact. After the fact. But after the fact, when lawlessness has disadvantaged people, put them in disadvantage, how do you compensate them for their injury, their loss, and their ruin? Hmm. Okay, let's step back for a minute and use the story. We can't change what happened to us. We can talk about it, how awful it was, and it was, and we need to be reminded of the truth and all. But we can't change anything that was done. Wherever you are in life, whatever you've been through, whatever you're going through, whatever has happened, you can't change what has happened. It just happened. Whether it was good, bad, right or wrong, or whatever. You can spend your life looking back. But that doesn't change anything. You can spend your life crying over spilled milk. See? But that doesn't change anything. You can spend your life blaming others for your situation. That doesn't change anything. So I don't make light of what happened. But I can't change what has happened. So after the fact that whatever has happened has happened, the question then becomes, what is the appropriate action for helping the disadvantaged? Meaning that after all of this is over and has been done, how do you now go on? Come on. What's the appropriate action, action to help you get to a place of healing where you can move forward in life? What measures do we take? Say thank you, Lord. If I could do it again, maybe I would do things differently. Maybe I'll make other decisions. But the fact of the matter is, what's done is done. And after the fact, when I've been put in a disadvantaged position, the question becomes, what is the appropriate action for helping me to recover? Helping me to sort of level the playing field. And I'm going to go somewhere with this. I'm not going to stay in politics. I just want you to, you know, 
I always like to connect, and that's about as deep as I'm going to go in the politics. That's why we're wrestling with them for. So I'm going to put up a word up here that we all familiar with. So somebody say affirmative action is the appropriate action. I'm going to talk to somebody else and say affirmative action. Talk to the other and say affirmative action. That's the same. Because we're asking that question of, of what is the appropriate action when you've been disadvantaged. What is the appropriate action? I would say an affirmative action. So all the difference between the three is that the Samaritan took an affirmative action. And that, that, that does something. Quick, simple de the definition, and I'm going to go somewhere, uh, uh, start shifting the turn to where I want to go. Affirmative action, any measure beyond ter termination, and this is referring to discriminatory practices, any measure uh, adopted to correct or compensate for past or present discriminations, in this case, that's what we're talking about, um, past and also to keep it from happening again. Because when you've been disadvantaged, to some degree, you're behind. Matter of fact, to a great degree, that's the whole idea of it, is to make you behind. So affirmative action is any action taken to help offset or compensate for where you were held back and where you lack something. That's an affirmative action. Let me give you a case in point. I'll read these two, and I'm going to shift to the scriptures to bring it on. In 1961, President John F. Kennedy um, incorporated the concept of an affirmative action by executive order requiring that positive steps um, should be taken, designed to overcome the obstacles that were created, you no know, fault of ours, to level the playing field, in other words. Mm -hmm. Some positive steps should be taken. In 1965, President Lyndon Johnson followed suit by executive order and did the same thing. He said that, not a fact, he may be one a step further and said that no discrimination against should happen to occur against any employee or, or whatever the qualified applicant because of race, color, religion, sex, nationality, and so forth and so on, even a step further. Here's the point I want to read. In 1965, President, President uh, Lyndon Johnson said this at a commencement speech at Howard University, July 4th, 1965. This is what he said. Freedom is not enough. Hmm. Freedom is not enough. Look at what he said. This is, this is, you can read this. You do not take a person who for years have been hobbled by chains and liberate him. Bring him up to the starting line of a race and then say, you are free to compete with all the others and still justly believe that you have been completely fair. 